If you're interested in learning Spanish, check out Spanish Uncovered, an excellent course which uses the power of engaging stories to teach you Spanish. Click the link in the description to check it out. There are 19 countries and territories in Latin America where the vast majority of people speak Spanish. And some brainiacs think they're all Mexican. But each of those places has its own people and its own variety of Spanish, including Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is located in the Caribbean Sea, but is an unincorporated territory of the USA. Its official languages are both Spanish and English, but 95% of the population speaks Spanish as their native language. They speak Puerto Rican Spanish, which has its own distinct accent and vocabulary. Because the people of Puerto Rico, known as Boricuas, are US citizens, they're free to travel and live anywhere in the USA. So there are large Boricua communities in various parts of the country, like New York and Florida, some of whom speak Boricua Spanish fluently. There may actually be more speakers of Boricua Spanish on the US mainland than there are on the island of Puerto Rico. Before the arrival of Christopher Colombo in the year 1493, Puerto Rico was inhabited by the indigenous Taino people, who spoke an Arawakan language. The colonization of the island began when the first Spanish settlement was established there in the year 1508. The Taino were enslaved, and the majority died from violence, mistreatment, or disease. But most Puerto Rican people today have some Taino ancestry. The Spanish then began relying on enslaved Africans for labor instead of the Taino. Due to this contact between these enslaved peoples and the colonialists, the variety of Spanish that developed on the island was influenced by the Taino language as well as by African languages, as happened in many Spanish-speaking parts of the Caribbean. It was also heavily influenced by the Spanish dialects of the Canary Islands, because in the first three centuries of colonial times, that's where the majority of Spanish settlers came from. A large number of Portuguese settlers also settled on the island, and had a noticeable impact on the island's dialect. More immigration came after the year 1815, when Spanish issued the Royal Decree of Graces, which gave Spaniards and other Europeans incentives to settle in Puerto Rico. At first, the greatest number of settlers came from Catalonia and Mallorca, in the Balearic Islands, which brought some Catalan influence into the Boricua variety of Spanish. Then others began to arrive from Corsica, mainland France, Italy, more from Portugal, and elsewhere. This continued until 1896, when Spain lost Puerto Rico to the USA in the Spanish-American War. Puerto Rico has been a US territory ever since, and English has had a big impact on Puerto Rican Spanish. All of these different influences have made colloquial Puerto Rican Spanish quite distinct from other varieties of Spanish, though in many ways it's similar to the Spanish spoken in nearby Dominican Republic as well as Cuba. Pronunciation. Like most Latin American varieties of Spanish, Puerto Rican Spanish uses ceseo, meaning that the letter Z and the letter C before I or E is pronounced S rather than TH. This is nothing surprising. Some other elements of Boricua pronunciation are a little surprising though. When R, R, appears at the end of a syllable, it's often pronounced like an L, L. The verb meaning to cook, cocinar, is pronounced, cocinar. The verb to eat, comer, is pronounced, comer. It's sometimes dropped entirely, especially when followed by a pause or a consonant. Comer, cocinar. We'll talk about one of the most surprising aspects of Boricua pronunciation in a minute. But first, a few words about a way of learning Spanish that I think you'll love. If you're excited to learn Spanish, I highly recommend you check out the course Spanish Uncovered from the company Story Learning. Spanish Uncovered was created by Ollie Richards, a major figure in the language learning community whose approach to language learning is based on using stories. You may have seen some of his best-selling books at your local bookstore or on Amazon, including his books on Spanish. His Uncovered courses are based on the same philosophy of story learning, but they're much more extensive and are designed to take you from a beginner level up to the B1 level, lower intermediate, so that you can genuinely communicate at a basic level with Spanish speakers. And if you already know the basics, there's a Spanish Uncovered Intermediate course that's perfect for you. The course consists of 20 chapters of a story, with each chapter containing not only a core reading and listening lesson, but also additional video lessons and exercises that build on that core material. If you're tired of boring apps and grammar-based translation, I recommend you try out the story learning approach with Spanish Uncovered. If you click my link in the description, you can try it for free for seven days. If you upgrade to a paid course, LangFocus gets a small commission that helps support this channel. So it's win-win. It's great for you, and it's great for LangFocus. 
By the way, Spanish isn't the only language in the Uncovered series. They have courses for Turkish, German, French, and others. I'll put a link to this page with all of their courses in the description below. And now back to the main video. The normally trilled R, represented by double R in writing, as well as by a single R at the beginning of words, is pronounced H by many speakers. The word for car Carro. becomes Carro. The word for dog Perro. becomes Perro. The word for war Guerra. becomes Guerra. This pronunciation might come from the influence of Portuguese. It's important to note that this pronunciation is not universal and is used largely in rural areas. The trilled R is also widely used, especially in cities. The sound represented by the letter J is normally pronounced H, but in Puerto Rican Spanish, it's usually pronounced H. The word for woman is normally pronounced Mujer rather than Mujer. Sometimes it can even be silent. Mujer. The S consonant, S, is often aspirated or dropped like it is in Chilean and Rio Platense accents. There's the verb estar, meaning to be in the temporary sense. It's pronounced estar. Its second person singular form, meaning you are, estás, is pronounced está. This means are you at school now? Estás en la escuela ahora. Notice it too in the word for school. Escuela becomes escuela. In some Puerto Rican accents, especially in Puerto Rican communities on the U.S. mainland, the S sound can disappear completely. Eta might become eta. Notice the aspiration in the phrase hasta luego, which means see you later. Hasta luego. Or you could say, no vemos ahorita. In standard Spanish, this literally means we will see each other right now. But in Puerto Rico, ahorita or ahorita means later rather than right now. Another way of saying later is Más tarde. In standard Spanish, this is Más tarde. But the S is aspirated, and the R at the end of the syllable here is pronounced as an L sound, L. The N consonant, N, is velarized and pronounced N at the end of words. For example, in the word for balcony, Balcón. The word for volcano, Volcán. Podemos ver el volcán desde el balcón. We can see the volcano from the balcony. The D sound between vowels, the, is often dropped. The word for nothing, nada, is pronounced, na. The word for state, as well as been, estado, is pronounced, estado. Some words get shortened. The word, para, meaning for, becomes, pa. The word, madre, meaning mother, becomes, my. The word, padre, meaning father, becomes, pai. The word, hermano, meaning brother, becomes mano, which is used with the meaning of brother or sister, and is also used for friends. Another word that gets shortened is estoy, meaning I am. It becomes estoy. One more example is the pronunciation of voy a, meaning I'm going to, as wa. No te voy a mentir. I'm not going to lie to you. Word for word, not to you, I'm going to lie. Vocabulary. Puerto Rican Spanish has some of its own vocabulary and expressions that don't occur in other dialects, at least not most of them. Speakers of Puerto Rican Spanish use the greeting hola, like other Spanish speakers, but when greeting strangers or someone they haven't seen in a while, a Puerto Rican might say huepa. This word is also used as an expression of joy or happiness, like all right or yes. In Puerto Rico, money is often referred to as chavo. This originally meant one one hundredth of a peso, but now also refers to money in general. If you have no chavo, people might say you're pelao, which means broke. Ay, pero nena, no tengo chavo, así que estoy pelao. Oh, but babe, I have no money, so I'm broke. Word for word, it's oh, but babe, not I have money, so I am broke. Ay, bendito. This is like saying, oh my god. You can say this to express pity for someone, or express pain, shock, etc. It literally means, oh blessed. You might also hear just, bendito, or even, dito. You might say that when a situation is, al garete, which means out of control or a mess. This originated as a nautical term meaning adrift. Mi presentación estuvo al garete total. This means, my presentation was a total disaster. Word for word, it's, my presentation was disastrous totally. 
If a situation is particularly chaotic and disorderly, you might use the noun Revolu. For example, El bembe terminó en un revolu total. The party ended in total chaos. Word for word, it's the party finished in a chaotic situation total. Bembe is a word from the Yoruba language of Nigeria. It refers to a party for Yoruba deities, but in Puerto Rican Spanish, it refers to any party. If there were no problems and the party went well, you might say it was a fuego. This literally means on fire. Just like how in English these days you can say something is fire. So it means awesome, amazing, or something like that. To say something's good in a somewhat more subdued way, you might say the word chévere. This is like the word cool in English. It's not used only in Puerto Rico, but in a number of countries in the Caribbean region and even beyond. La película estuvo chévere. This sentence means the movie was cool, or I enjoyed the movie. La movie estuvo bien chévere. Notice that the English loanword movie can be used instead of película. And notice that bien, which means well, can be used colloquially with the meaning of really or very. That's something that's not limited to Boricua Spanish. When you go to a party or to the movies, you might go with your group of friends, your corillo. This is like saying crew in English. It comes from the diminutive form of the word coro, which means chorus. If you want to get one of their attention, you might say mira or mira. It's like saying yo. As in, yo, Paul, do you have the tickets? Mera, Paul, tiene lo boleto. Word for word, it's, yo, Paul, you have, the, plural form, tickets. In various varieties of Latin American Spanish, people casually call familiar people, mami, and, papi, meaning mommy and daddy, for people other than their mother and father, I mean. But Puerto Rican Spanish speakers call people, mami, and papi, regardless of their level of familiarity or formality. So it can even be used like madam or sir. If you think that's ridiculous and that I must be lying, then you might say that my statement is Wasa. This means bullshit or lies. It can also be used for a person who talks a lot of BS. Kind of like my ex, who talked a lot of BS. Ay, pero mi ex hablaba guasa, guasa. Oh, but my ex was really someone who talks BS. Why was I with her in the first place? Well, she was a gata. For a man, you would say gato. These words mean cat in its feminine and masculine forms, but in Puerto Rican slang, they also refer to an attractive person. And to be clear, it's used for both women and men. Those are some common Boricua words and expressions, but Puerto Rican Spanish is also well known for its extensive borrowing from English. Here are a couple of examples. Brutal. This is used with the meaning of amazing. Acho, la comida de ese restaurante brutal. This means, bro, the food at that restaurant's amazing. Word for word, it's, bro, the food of that restaurant is amazing. Acho is a shortened form of muchacho, which means boy, and is used like dude or bro. Pana. This comes from English partner, and is used with the meaning of buddy or pal. Gangriman. This comes from English congressman, and means important person or big shot. A more common way of saying big shot these days might be bichote, which comes from English big shot. Zafacón. This word means waste basket or garbage can. It's thought to come from English safety can or save a can. Fotro. This word refers to a chaotic situation. This might sound weird, but it comes from English foxtrot, the name of a popular dance from around a hundred years ago. Sometimes verbs have roots borrowed from English, but are conjugated as Spanish verbs. Hangyal. This verb comes from English hang out and means to hang out. Ayer hangué en la playa con lo pana. This sentence means I hung out with the boys at the beach yesterday. Word for word it's yesterday I hung out at the beach with the pals. Gufial. This is a verb meaning to goof around or joke around. It comes from English goof. Deja de gufial que hay gente importante acá. This sentence means stop goofing around because there are important people here. Word for word, it's lay off of goof around because there are people important here. There are also some loan translations from English using Spanish words but directly translated from English expressions. Te veo. This means see you as in bye. Word for word, it's you, I see. Te llamo pa atrás. This means I'll call you back. Word for word, it's you, I call backwards. Pa atrás is a contraction of 
para atrás. There are also some loan words from the Taíno language, but mainly in place names and some nouns related to the Taíno culture and environment. A couple of the more well-known words are huracán, meaning hurricane, canoa, meaning canoe. But of course, these words aren't relegated to Puerto Rico. Grammar. There aren't a lot of grammatical features of Boricua Spanish that are different from other varieties of Spanish, but there are a few things we can take note of. As in most of Latin America, Boricuas use utere instead of vosotros for the second person plural subject pronoun. In other words, the plural you for both informal and formal use. In Puerto Rico, the subject pronoun can come right before the verb in questions, whereas in standard Spanish it normally doesn't. A standard question meaning what are you talking about might be ¿De qué hablas tú? Or ¿Tú de qué hablas? But in Puerto Rican Spanish it might be like this ¿De qué tú hablas? Speakers of Puerto Rican Spanish also have a tendency to express possessives like this El perro mío Which is like saying the dog of mine rather than Mi perro My dog El carro mío Rather than Mi carro To mean my car Chacho, aléjate el carro mío Bro, get away from my car. Like acho, this is a shortened form of muchacho and means dude or bro. When Boricua Spanish speakers point something out, they can place emphasis on it by putting the demonstrative pronoun after the noun. For example, El tipo ese. To mean that guy, rather than Ese tipo. La cosa esa. To mean that thing, rather than Esa cosa. Hey, that thing is broken. Oye, la cosa esa está jota. Word for word, it's Hey, the thing that is broken. And some other concepts are expressed differently. The phrase meaning no more in standard Spanish is ningún otro. But in Puerto Rican Spanish you'll hear más ninguno. The phrase nothing else in standard Spanish is nada más. But in Puerto Rican Spanish you'll hear más nada. Más nada importa. Nothing else matters. Puerto Rican Spanish is certainly a very colorful and expressive variety of Spanish, as you can see from the examples. Unfortunately, it's often looked down upon and made fun of by speakers of other varieties of Spanish, probably because of a few major differences in its phonology, like the aspiration of S and the different pronunciations of R. But with a language as far-flung and widely spoken as Spanish, there are bound to be some differences like that. Even within Puerto Rico, there are numerous local varieties, and Puerto Ricans living on the U.S. mainland often speak a little different as well. But all in all, the differences aren't nearly as great as they could be after centuries of each dialect developing in its own interesting way. If you're a speaker of Puerto Rican Spanish, how different do you think your speech is from other Spanish speakers? How do others react to your Spanish? If you're a speaker of another variety of Spanish, what's your impression of Boricua Spanish? As always, it's time to give a big shout out to all of the LangFocus Patreon supporters, especially the ones whose names appear right here on the screen. They are the top tier Patreon supporters, so let's give them a round of applause. If you liked this video, then check out my playlist on the Spanish language. It has videos on other varieties like Mexican, Chilean, and Argentinian Spanish, comparisons between Spanish and other languages, and more. I'm sure you'll find it fascinating.